What's up everyone, thanks for watching. My name's Dave and in today's video I should be finishing up the split top rubo with affordable lumber and not so affordable hardware. In part one I was able to build the tops and install the tail vise and in this video today I should be able to get the base finished up, get everything put together and a good coat of finish on it. To build this bench, I would say that I consulted the plans from the bench crafted split top rubo. I didn't get to follow them to the T. I was using dimensional lumber and I would have made it kind of hard um, since in most of their plans they're assuming that you use 8 quarter lumber. I'm starting by making the chop for the leg vise. It's going to be made of dimensional lumber just like everything else so I'm going to cut everything to rough size and then run it through the planer and then I'm ready to glue the two boards together. One note here is I want to leave the boards as thick as I can and have the mass of the leg vise as thick as I can to accommodate the bench crafted hardware that will go on later. Here I'm using my router to cut out all the mortises in the legs that will hold the stretchers later. All the mortises are going to be about two inches deep except for the one on the leg vise. That's going to be about an inch and a quarter so I don't run into the cavity for the crisscross hardware. Using a miter sled and a stop block I'll cut all the stretchers to their final length. Then I'll switch my blades out to a dado stack so I can start cutting the tenons on all the stretchers. The tenons are all going to be about 5 eighths of an inch thick and they're offset a little bit to one side. I offset the tenons a little bit to leave the material between the face of the leg and the mortise as thick as possible. I wanted to leave as much material in that area as I can because I would be draw bore pinning these stretchers into the legs later on. After making a height adjustment with the dado stack I can make the last two cuts on the tenon. And while I have the dado stack installed to my table saw, I can make the tenons that will go into the end of the legs. These tenons are going to be 2 inches by 3 inches by an inch and a half long. Now that all the tenons are cut out the table saw, I can fine tune them to fit the mortises in the legs. I'm going to clean up the tenons with my shoulder plane and then round over the edges using a chisel and a rasp. It's much easier in my case to round over the tenon than it is to square up the corners of the mortise. Having a good rasp makes this a pretty quick and easy process. I definitely wanted to sneak up on the fit. I don't want to ruin one of the stretchers so um, I'll do a little at a time and then keep test fitting it until I get it right. Uh, next step is to mark off each stretcher to each mortise location so that I know exactly where everything goes back later. Since the tenon going into the leg that holds the leg vise is a little shorter, I'm just cutting it to its final length here at the miter saw. Once I've got the tenons fitted to the mortises, I'll do the dry fit of the base assembly. With the base all clamped together, I'll flip it over and line everything up to the underside of the tops. Once I know I've got all the edges lined up, I can start marking out where the tenons are going to go. Now I can start making the mortises in the tops that will accept the tenons in the legs. These are inch and a half deep mortises, so I have to do it in multiple passes, taking about a quarter inch of material away each time. And like the tenons on the stretchers, it's much easier to round these tenons over than it is to square up the corners of the mortises on the tops. So I use the same method of knocking the corners off with a chisel and then rounding it over with a rasp. And after a couple iterations, I get a really good fit between the top and the leg tenon. The bench tops are going to be held in place with the tenons on one side and long half inch lag bolts on the other. So here I'm drilling a recess where the lag bolts are going to go into the upper stretchers that will hold the tops. After drilling the counter bore for the head of the bolt, I'll drill a pilot hole to go through the stretcher the rest of the way. Next I need to get all the leg vise hardware installed to the leg before I put anything else together. I'll start by routing out the cavity that's going to hold the crisscross mechanism of the benchcrafted hardware. I'm using a retro version of the crisscross hardware so it has an added bracket that I have to route out for and then clean up all the edges of that mortise. I bought the retro version because my drill press isn't the best and it doesn't have a long throw on it so drilling a pin that would hold the crisscross hardware in would be quite difficult. Um, I thought adding the retro version bracket would be a lot easier. Here I'm marking out for where the hole's going to go that the vise screw goes through and where a bushing sits around it. Then I can drill out the inch and a quarter hole for the screw over at the drill press. I'll get most of the way through the hole with my drill press and then I'll add an extension to the bit and use my hand drill to finish the rest of the way. The recess for the bushing around the hole is a half inch deep. I didn't have a drill bit this big so I had to use my router going freehand to make it. 
It worked out okay, I just went really slow and made a bunch of thin passes. Now that the leg portion of the vise is done, I can start working on the chop. I'll start by ripping it to the right width at the table saw and then use my crosscut sled to square everything up. The vise chop gets the same cavity cut out to hold the crisscross hardware as the leg got, so here I'm just marking everything out. And then I'll just repeat the same routing activities and chiseling as I did on the leg. Here I'm installing two bearing plates that the crisscross will ride against into the leg vise and into the leg. Then I can drill the inch and a quarter hole through the leg vise that the screw is going to go through. Here I'm marking out where the cap screws are going to get installed to hold the retro kit to the leg. And now I'll drill a couple pilot holes for the cap screws. So here's a caution about not following the plans to the T. I didn't think about this until I started to install this hardware, but the cavity for the crisscross vise is um, an inch and seven sixteenths deep, and the cap screws for the retro kit are an inch and a quarter long. So um, I'm really close to drilling all the way through the leg vise here. I do have the thickness of the retro um, bracket to consider, so that helps me a little bit. But I had to be very careful in not uh, over drilling or drilling too deep into the leg vise or I'd come out the other side. So after drilling the pilot holes, I'm going to tap threads into the holes. Um, they're going to be 5 16 by 18. Um, and this is the first time I've ever tapped threads into wood, but it worked out pretty well and it seems like it's pretty strong. I chucked the tap into my drill and set it on a low slow setting and um, just went at it and it was pretty easy. Uh, I would recommend doing it in some scrap wood first, but I, I wouldn't be worried about this process. And after the threads are tapped into the wood, I can install the bracket for the crisscross hardware. Next I'll install the bushing that goes into the leg and then uh, install the leg to the vise using the crisscross hardware. I'll put the pin in, but I won't install all the C-clips and stuff. I'm just doing a test fit here. So once I thought the crisscross hardware was working out well, I installed the screw and marked out where the flange was gonna go. I had to tap more threads into the leg vise for the screw flange to go into. So once that was done, I can install the flange wheel and screw to the vise and stick it all through the leg and install the nut on the back side of the leg. I definitely recommend following the benchcrafted directions for this part of the install. Um, there's some specific instructions about how to place the nut perfectly to get it into the sweet spot of the screw so that you get that real smooth function like you see everybody post in their videos. And once I'm all finished up with the leg vise, I'm going to drill two 3 8 inch holes through each mortise of each leg um, for the draw bore pegs that will go in later. Then I'll finish up the legs by routing in a chamfer at the bottom of each one. Um, this is going to prevent me from getting any kind of tear out or blow out as I scoot the bench around the shop. Now I'll install the stretchers back into the legs and mark out where the pegs are going to go through the tenons. Then I'll take the stretchers out and bring them over to the drill press. I'll drill two 3 8 inch holes, but I won't drill them exactly where I marked them. I'll offset them closer to the shoulder of the stretcher by about a sixteenth of an inch. This will offset the holes between the legs and the tenon, or the stretchers, so that when I draw the peg in later on, it'll pull the two pieces together. For the pegs, I just used the oak dowel that I got from the home center. I cut them all to size and then I use my pencil sharpener just to taper in one edge and make it easier to drive the pegs in. Next I'm ready for some final assembly. Um, you probably noticed by now that I did not use any of the barrel bolts or anything that came with the Benchcrafted kit. Um, I'm sure they work fine, but it was uh, awfully hard to make work with the dimensional lumber setup that I had. And I think that the long tenons with the draw bore pegs are going to be plenty strong enough. Um, my last bench was built like this and I abused it for a good 5-6 years and haven't had any problems. In addition to the draw bore pegs, I did use glue on this assembly. So um, I glued all the tenons up and got everything put together, held it together with some clamps, and installed the draw bore pegs. Here I'm knocking in the pins for the draw bore pegs. You can see that they're going in at an angle, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. I want that um, draw bore peg to pull that tenon into the mortise. 
Then all I need to do is take my flush cut saw and cut away any of the excess dowel. I glued in the two short stretchers to the leg assemblies first and then came back and uh, glued and pegged the long stretchers in. One thing I forgot to do before assembling the base is drill this 3 quarter inch hole through the leg closest to the tail vise. This is where I keep my Veritas hold fast. It's a good location for it um, in case I have a really long board uh, I can clamp down the one end of the board to that leg while the other end of the board is in my leg vise. After the glue's dried on the base assembly, I'll flip it over and then start to install the two tops. The tops are getting pretty heavy at this point, so I called my shoeless son to come out and give me a hand putting them on. Um, I did most of the heavy lifting and he just helped me position everything into place, but I understand if you guys want to give me some grief about letting them in the shop with no shoes on. Next up I'm installing the half inch lag bolts that are supplied with the bench crafted kit. Um, so one end of the top is going to be held in with the tenon and the other end is going to be held in with this lag bolt. Next I'll start shaping out the chop for the leg vise. The chop is going to have kind of a coffin shape to it with a 45 degree angle cut at the top to allow my saw and hand tools to clear the top of the vise. Since I don't want the 45 degree cut at the top of the vise to come to a point, I'll cut it over at the miter saw and then take it over my table saw and cut a flat in the top. Then over at the band saw, I'll cut the rough shape into the chop. I'll start by cleaning off all the band saw marks and refining the shape of the chop with my number 7 joiner plane. And then I'll come back with my number 4 hand plane and create a chamfer in all the outside edges of the leg vise. And then once I've done all the shaping to the leg vise chop, I can reinstall the hardware and do its final assembly to the bench. The next step is to drill the bench dog holes into the bench top. Um, I marked my holes out to be about six inches away from each other. And um, after doing that, I wish I would have spaced them out a little closer, about four inches apart. Um, this is gonna work fine and there's a lot of throw on that tail vise and it moves real fast and smooth. So I'm not too worried about it. But if I had it to do over again, I would have definitely spaced them out a little closer. I used a homemade drill bushing or drill guide to start the holes and then finished them up by freehand. Um, I tried to err on angling the holes a little bit towards the tail vise so that they won't splay out when clamping boards in it later. So here I'm creating the gap stop for the center of the workbench. I don't want to put a lot of effort into this feature. I only want it to act as a planing stop or a saw stop later. So um, I'm going to beat it up and replace it as necessary. So it's going to be made out of a solid piece of pine and I'll start by cutting the notches out at the table saw and then start cleaning up the notches with my chisels to make it a good fit around the two upper stretchers of the bench. Then I can install it, take my hand plane and plane it flush with the two bench tops. Now I'm going to start working on the ledge that's going to hold the bottom shelf into the workbench. Um, this is an area where I deviated a bit from the bench crafted plans. Um, they have you use one inch thick material and create a groove in all the stretchers that these boards will sit in. Um, I'm going to use leftover two by material that I have so I'm going to make a inch by inch and a half ledge that goes all the way around the inside stretchers held in with glue and screws and then I can just place the two by material on top. Here I'm marking out two inches down from the top of each stretcher and then I'll take and line up the ledge boards that I cut earlier um, and apply a little glue and screw them into place. And then I'll just repeat the process for all four stretchers. Then I can rip all of the shelf boards to the right width at the table saw, take them over to the miter saw and cut them to their final length. Then over at the band saw, I'll notch out where the shelves are going to go around the legs. Now after the shelves are built, the last thing to do to this bench is to make sure that the tops are flat. I use my straight edge here to see if the tops are flat and coplanar with each other. If I notice that they're both kind of sagging in, both tops are kind of sagging in towards the middle, I am able to stick some shims on under the top and above the upper stretcher to kind of flatten everything out. Um, as long as the tops aren't real twisted, you shouldn't have much work to do here. This bench came out pretty good and the tops are pretty flat. I didn't have to do much work except for just a couple of little spots with the hand plane. Um, overall, really happy with how easy this was to make flat. 
For finish on this bench, I'm using a um, recipe out of Popular Woodworkings issue 184. It's equal parts varnish, boiled linseed oil, and mineral spirits. I got um, wipe on poly here, so I'm not going to add as much mineral spirits since there's already a lot added into the varnish. But um, I'll put two or three coats on this to make sure I get everything good and soaked into the wood. And with that, this bench is complete. I'm really happy with how everything turned out, and I'm really happy with that Benchcrafted hardware. Um, I hope you guys liked this video, and if you did, I hope you hit the subscribe button. Uh, leave some comments below and give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks.